Gatlinburg was the first event I revealed Vaded as like a business and like I had like a hundred shirts, like two designs, 50 each. And I was like selling them out the trunk of my car. It's been humble beginnings. Charlotte owns Slammed Enough. Last year he mentioned to me that there was like some guys like threatening to do a takeover. Yeah. It just sucks because the culture is so sick. Like I love this culture. Like I'm fully rooted in it. So it's just, there's something special like about the culture, but it's just like unfortunate to see when people abuse that. Gatlinburg, Tennessee, it's just beautiful. I mean, the mountains, like the roads are dope. There's a lot of stuff going on around here. You pass people on the roads. Yeah. Like I passed two cars on the way up here and then like you throw the deuce at them or whatever, you know, <laughs> like, you don't even know them. You're just right. like, what's up? Appreciate it. I'm stoked. It's the man, the myth, the legend right here. What up? What's up, bro? Yeah, you know oh, what's hideout, right? right? I'm still good. <laughs> I miss you. It's a long time no see Forever, dude. Dude. Yeah, Butterfly doors on the <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Street Alpha Podcast. I'm your host, Tooks, and we're out here in Gatlinburg, or I should say Sayreville, Sayreville, right? Yeah. Sayreville, Tennessee. I drove all the way out here, bent two wheels in Jersey, got lips delivered, or I should say lips for wheels, delivered today. I still haven't put them on because I'm doing this interview with the owner of Vaded Mob, Joshua Freeman. Let's clap it up for Josh. <laughs> Normally, there's nobody clapping. It's just like me and my girl in the yeah. studio. So. We got a little audience. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate you taking the time to come out and bring your RX-7 here. It's a beautiful car. Appreciate which it. Which I didn't even mention to you guys. Um, I don't even, I don't know too much about these cars. We just know it's a classic JDM vehicle. Yeah. Um, but you have butterfly doors on here, which is like super dope. Yeah. And the engine bay is crazy too. Thank so you. So we'll talk about that. We'll get into that. Cool, cool. But um, yeah, a lot to talk about, man. We had a little bit of conversation behind the scenes off camera um and i'm really interested in how you got into like you know this whole car culture yeah yeah cars in general um i kind of grew up playing with like hot wheels and stuff as a kid so i was okay. always kind of like in the mix of learning cars and stuff and my dad had actually an rx7 obviously older than mine but um he kind of put me on a little bit and i kind of followed that path how, how old are you i'm 33 now you're 33 yep Oh, wow. So maybe I'm not as old as I think. I'm 32. Yeah. Yeah. People always make fun of me because like, oh, like, dude, you don't even look like you're 32. Right. I get but, that too. I love it. <laughs> yeah. No, you look, you look young. Thank you. Um, appreciate I think it. it's probably mostly because like, you know, you're, you're in shape. Yeah. 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 So I try I to hit the gym <laughs> occasionally. <laughs> when you have a, when you have like a, you know, a little belly, you know, you look older most of the time. Facts. Um, so and your dad had an RX-7. Yeah. What was after that? Yeah. So like throughout high school, I mean, like my family was a little, like not a little, my family was poor. So I didn't have any cool cars. Um, my dad made me buy my first car myself. So I like at 15, I was working at Taco Bell, which is kind of a funny story, like for $5 an hour. Really? And I had like, uh, it was like a 1988 Honda Accord, which is older than me. Um, That's but crazy. I like had that itch. I was like at AutoZone buying like chrome mufflers and stuff yeah. and just like kind of started tinkering on it and continued to fall in love and then uh yeah it's just kind of came a long way it's man. funny because like that that's literally like my same story like i worked at mcdonald's when i was 15 i love it. A car auto zone the whole vibe like it's literally yeah. the same thing so you're actually a honda guy uh i wouldn't say anymore <laughs> so what do you consider yourself like what was the first uh, car that you actually wanted the uh, the rx7 was a poster car actually okay. um just like the rotaries in general which has always fascinated me instead of pistons there's rotors yeah um then i had a hyundai genesis which was like okay one of my first cars that i like built that was like pretty dope like it was on air it was like wrapped before like wrapping was like huge yeah and uh that car was sick i met a lot of friends through that one then i later uh, met a homie through the Genesis community that had a Subaru STI 
And I was like, I rode in his car and I was like, yo, I got to have one of these. These are so sick. I always so, wanted that car. So I grabbed a 2015 STI uh, in 2015 and uh, started modding that, then went over the top with it, did a big bu- big build on it. It was like, it's 800 horsepower. And then I did a wide body, wide body kit, paint matched it, cage and a bunch of cool stuff. It's on air too. What? Yeah. So at the time, what were you doing to kind of like be able to afford at building that a car time? like that? Especially a Subaru, because those are expensive. Yeah, that's build. a good question. At that time, I was really just grinding super hard on Vaded. So okay. I kind of went through, um, at the beginning of buying the STI, I was a bartender. Um, I was working like doubles, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah. and then like some lunch shifts Monday and Wednesday. And I was like, just crushing it with that. Like, so that was uh right. I was in school at the time too. I ended up like dropping out of school, like college. Yeah. And uh, I quit my job and I was like, dude, like I want to work for myself, which led to me starting my first business, which was a lighting production company. You and I kind of talked about okay. it behind the scenes a little bit. Right. So that was super fun. Um, I got into DJing, so I was able to, get gigs with the lighting production and uh yeah it was it was a super fun scene long nights but um it kind of put me on and taught me how to like create an llc and a business which i i ran for a while i later sold it to a homie i sold the whole business it did really well um for being 25 i would say it did well that's really impressive yeah so i eventually sold that company and then uh i like sat there and like i had money and I, i went through like a really dark moment in that time because I didn't really feel like I had a purpose. So like I personally kind of like maneuver with a purpose, like I'm sure as as well as you do, you know? Um, and it like pushed me to create Vaded really. Like I had Vaded out an idea, out of following on social media and uh, I just kind of made a rough draft on a business plan and showed it to some homies. And this would have been in 2015. Right. Yeah. So from there, um, I pitched the idea to the homies and they're like, dude, you should definitely do this. This sounds sick. So it was kind of like back then there were definitely car clubs, but I wanted to like take a fashion take on it, like a streetwear fashion, like Japanese inspired fashion. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it just kind of evolved over the years, like eight years now, probably. Eight yeah. Years. Probably, probably about eight years. And, uh, which kind of ties me into Gatlinburg a little bit. And like, cause Gatlinburg was the first event I re- revealed Vaded as like a business and like I had like a hundred shirts, like two designs, 50 each. And I was like selling them out the trunk of my car and stuff. So it's been humble beginnings. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually literally going through that right now. So I, you know, I'm wearing a street outfit t-shirt, right? Yeah. I went through this whole process of, I've never done merch before. I never even looked into it. Uh Never knew how to press a t-shirt, anything. Right. And I tried to do all this a week before coming here Mm -hmm. and if you know how that goes when you do designs and like you can't do that in a week right so um it's definitely uh, a tedious process it is definitely stressful especially if you have a certain vision for what exactly so when you started vaded and you had this influence like you know with the uh japanese culture yeah like what were your like influences at the time like who were you looking up to to kind of say like oh i like this style of, of merch so that's a good question um a homie that i knew in college uh his name was matt fields he started dope couture which is a brand. Yeah. Uh, which is, they're pretty big in LA. They, they have a spot on Fairfax. They like, okay, they're getting after it. So I was tight with him and I saw what he was doing and kind of maneuvering. And I was just like, dude, I want to, I want to start a clothing brand. Like it was always a pipe dream. Yeah. So like in that moment of like trying to find my purpose, I was like, dude, I should just start a clothing brand and like use my following and market it on cars and create like a team. And like, which later would become a family who I'm with, you know, this weekend. So still today. Yeah. So at the time you, um, you had a following you, you mentioned a couple yep. of times, how did you like get that following? Like what was the main, like what was your main, like what was your content based on at that time? So that was back when IG, like you could post photos and really right. get them popping and like get pages to share your stuff. I so, that, yeah. so that was like, cause like you could post like three times a day and gain like 50 followers. It was like fun, you yeah. know? And then you're networking with all these people, right. which is like, I think one of the coolest parts is how like pretty much we met, you yeah, know, same thing. about way. Usual friends. Yeah. Similar thing. Yeah. I think that back then, um, growing a following with the car, with the car scene, you definitely have to be outside. Yeah. Like I, I have a following based off of me being able to create quality content uh-huh. and because of my car, but the way you did it and like for Vlad and Zumi, like yeah. he was taking photos. Yeah. He was taking pictures of everybody's cars and that's how he got his name out there. So I think that um, we're kind of losing that today in this, in the car culture yeah. because everyone's just getting on social media, posting their cars, getting a following, but we're losing the networking. I agree. You know, aspect yeah. of, of the car community. So 
it's definitely dope that you grew up that way when yeah. it comes to the following. Um, so you had Vaded, right? Were you going to H2O at all? I didn't. So Never. like it, ironically enough, almost seemed like it fell on the same weekend or the weekend before Gatlinburg okay. and you know how it goes. You yeah. Know, it's grind time the week before. So this is giving me like H2O vibes. I went to H2O in uh, 20, I think it was 2018. And it's very similar minus the strip and the houses on like one main road. Yeah. Um, but the vibe of it is pretty dope because like everyone's here for like the same reason for like a solid week. Yeah. Um, the only thing is I don't know how long this is going to last because a lot of the takeover stuff is happening. People doing stupid shit. What's your take on that? It's uh, uh, man, it sucks to see really. Like I know there's been a couple of times like last year, Charlotte and I are tight. Charlotte owns Slammed Enough. Last year he mentioned to me that there was like some guys like threatening to do a takeover. Yeah. And it's just like, it just sucks because the culture is so sick. Like I love this culture. Like I'm fully rooted in it. Just you pass people on the roads. Yeah. Like I pass two cars on the way up here and they're like, you throw the deuce at them or whatever, you know, <laughs> like, you don't even know them. You're just right. like, what's up? So it's just, there's something special like about the culture but it's just like unfortunate to see when people abuse that and like they take the event and just kind of like take it to a lower level by like doing things they shouldn't be we got to be like respectful to the area in my opinion so mm -hmm. we can keep meeting up with our friends right meeting internet friends doing podcasts so yeah that's that's my take on it do you do you think that there's anything that that you guys can do to kind of prevent that from happening other than you know law enforcement yeah i mean we try like i really do try like every person that like is kind of like in my circle i really try to like tell them to like set a good energy like sh like lead by example you right. know like so i think that's the best thing we can do is just all lead by example if like you know we've got a bunch of homies in a circle you know like yeah just you know a couple guys need to lead by example and set the standard and then hopefully you know it revives itself it seemed pretty respectful um, last night. I mean, I, I, I went to a gas station. Yeah. Is that Did you go common? to the marathon? Uh, yeah. I think that's what it was, right? Marathon? Oh, dude. I saw a photo and I was so mad I wasn't there. So you it just came in sick. yesterday, right? Yeah. I got here yesterday morning. Yesterday yeah. morning. So you didn't like what? what's like the normal thing that people do when they get here? They, I mean, I know the procedure here in this mm. house, but like, is it? the same pretty much for same yeah like homies rolling in helping them get their cars off the right. trailers you the know walmart thing a parking lot walmart exactly like get groceries hang out chop it up and then do you guys like because you guys have been doing this for so long do you guys try to go out the first night like what's the we usually like keep it pretty chill the first night okay i would say yeah so like typically like on this week so get in wednesday let's say and then we have thursday tomorrow or today and uh between those two days, we try to do photo shoots. Right. And then my team and I, Friday, it's just like, it's game time at that point. So we're running a 10 by 20 booth inside the convention center, which we have to set up at 11 a.m. And then simultaneously be setting up at the pre -meet. So mm. another booth and another merch setup. So it definitely gets interesting, but it's super fun because a lot of other vendors that are vending the pre -meet are also doing the same thing. Right. So it's just really cool. It's like humbling to, you know, have like, other dope vendors that are coming and like setting up two different booths, you know? Right, right, it's right. Sick. So what I'm what I'm curious about is how did this became like a weekly thing? Because it's just like any other car. Well, I don't want to say it's just like any other car show, but like it's basically like having a car show on the weekend, but then it's like a week event. So right. when did that start? Has that always been a thing? Where so it's like a week? It being the eighth year, I really st started to see it like popping off like on like Wednesday and Thursday, probably like three years ago, probably about. Uh, how when did h2o h2o i be like stop stop i think it stopped after i think i think it was 2020 or the year after i know people went so two or three years ago let's say three years ago yeah that's about ago. the same time i would say that like like we were cruising out to like a battle gang party that i was djing at and it was like 11 o'clock and there were just like hella cars mobbing on the strip and like at that moment i was like guys like we're in a truck or whatever i was like can you believe this because you know it's like we've been doing it for five years at that point yeah and it was just like surreal almost it was like the energy was different you know like right. it's just like every there were so many more people which yeah. is dope you know so do you feel like you you're 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 like a heavy influence on on this event i would like to think so humbly yeah i mean back in let's see, eight years ago. So like 2016, 2015, I think was the first Slammed Enough Gatlinburg. 
And that back then it was a one day show right. with 125 cars in the Gatlinburg convention center. And it was like, we had like four vaded cars there <laughs> and it was dope. It was dope. But then there's like a couple other like crews, which we are all homies, you know, yeah. it's all love. And like, we knew everyone, like all the 125 cars, like the drivers and like the staff, we were just all homies. Yeah. So to see it grow into like what it is eight years later, it's just like, it's amazing really, you know, meet a bunch of new friends. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. So like what, when, what made it like here? Why here? Why, why Gatlinburg, Tennessee? I think like Gatlinburg, Tennessee, it's just beautiful. I mean, the mountains, like the roads are dope. You roads know? are crazy. The roads I'm are sure crazy. you had fun coming up here. Yeah. So fun. <laughs> so fun. It's so fun. Uh, yeah. Good roads. Um, I think cruising a strip helps. There's lots of other things to do, like go go-karting or whatever. Right. You know, it's, there's a lot of stuff going on around here. So is there any other cities that you feel like this event would fit because I feel like, I mean, I've never, I'm from New York. Yeah. So you don't see this unless you're going upstate. And even then you don't really see like this. Right. You know, it's just right. like crazy. Like you're not going to be sitting in front of a RX seven with a crazy view in the background, like on a, in the house with all your boys, you know for what I'm saying? Sure, it's really for like sure. That. It's pretty hard to beat. I would say, um, I think I have some ideas. I've always kind of plotted on doing my own event or whatever. I think like, bringing back some airport hanger shows Ooh, would be sick yeah. we have we have a uh, well first, first class, class fitment, fitment yeah. yeah and then now it's which isn't a thing anymore but right there's other shows that are like that like panda fest recently had a, a show at that same hangar yeah um but that was a vibe that was a really that good show sick, yeah it's kind of hard to come by those those shows yeah yeah nowadays. that would be a good spot like to do bring some energy like that simply clean was always dope they're like kind of yeah. on the east coast or whatever um, I went to that show and it was like, it was kind of like the same energy. It's like, so I feel like what makes Gatlinburg special is a destination location. Right. So like with the destination location tied in with like car culture, like you're going to have a dope event. Yeah. So, um, you have a, you have a YouTube. Yeah. Right. Um, can you talk about that and why you started filming for, for YouTube? Cause I, I, people always say, look, you should do vlog. You should vlog this. And I, from my experience, like people watch the podcast yeah that works but when i vlog my own stuff it's just like i get like two thousand views like right? nobody really watches it yeah so it's like you kind of question like do people really fuck with me or are they <laughs> just sure. like, you know what i mean it's like, hard dude it's like hard to put yourself out there my first video is like i like ran it back like a week ago i was so nervous on it you know it's yeah. like you're filming yourself you're holding a camera like walking around talking right um but like i just think it's fun like even for me i could just kind of did it for me and to put myself out there a little bit more to create like try to create like a different community right. than like ig and uh facebook or whatever um but yeah like view counts like my views aren't crazy or anything like the gatlinburg video does really well and like right. some other event videos do well but like it's just fun like i think it's something that could be cool for me personally to look back on and be like oh i was building my rx7 or my chaser or whatever yeah, the subaru yeah. and just like fun content to look back on for myself you know right yeah so do you like what do you consider yourself like do you have your hands on your car most of the time yeah, so um, this car specifically was built. The motor was assembled by Centric Motorsports. Okay, and yeah, then these, like these cars, the rotaries are. Yeah, you got to know what you're doing with these. Yeah, for sure. Like having studied a, a rotary motor, it's like fairly simple. Um, but, anyways, I'll leave it to those guys. Yeah, you know, it's like kind they of build, thing. they yeah. build like awesome shit. So I was like, I want, like, right here we go. So there's some prototype parts on the car from them. So they they supported this build a lot. You got the work wheels. This is a beautiful car, man. Yeah. How long did it take to build this car? Uh, man, good question. I think I've had that one for five years now. Five? Yeah. Pretty wow. crazy story behind this car. So, like, the chick, this chick I went to high school with, um, her dad drove it. And, like, it was silver. It was, like, four different silvers. Like, it had been wrecked and, like, repaired. And um, I always bugged her. Like, I started seeing her out or whatever when I was, like, DJing really heavily at, like, yeah. the local, like, clubs or whatever. And I would be, like, sell me that RX-7. Sell me that RX-7. Finally, I, I probably had to ask her, like, seven times. And finally, she hit me up one day. She's, like, hey, my parents said it was cool if, like, if you wanted the RX-7. And she was, like, well, they'll sell it to you for 13K. And it was okay. running and driving. So in that moment i was building my sti i was doing a big block build going for like 800 horsepower motec ecu i was just going all out on my yeah, sti Motec, okay yeah and um i told her i was like look i'm i'm like 
super in on this Subaru, like yeah. financially. And uh, she was like, okay, let me talk to my mom. And then her mom hit me up and she was like, hey, like Haley showed me like, you know, like all of the videos and content that you make. And like, we just want you to have the car. Like, could you do like nine or 10? And at that oh, point I was like, I'll be there tomorrow with like 9K. And she is like, we'll have the title ready. So, it was so because dope. of your content, that's yeah. why you got to do it. Yeah, yeah. It was humbling because like they saw like, I mean, I'm passionate about it. Like yeah. I let people know. I try to tell my story and uh, they, they kind of saw it. They knew it was going to be in like my hands and like what I would like kind of bring it to. Yeah. So it was, it's a super dope story behind that car. That's fire. Yeah. So did you let it sit because you were still working on the Subaru? Or? I did. I like slowly went into it. Um, I had like some, still do, but I had some connections in Japan and uh, I ordered an, the M Sport kit for it. And uh, it came in like seven days. My guy like air shipped it and like pretty much hit the ground running from there. That's dope. Yeah. That's, that's this car is like, I love the car. Definitely one um, of my favorites. Um, however, I'm pretty sure if you break like a center console part, it's probably like five thousand dollars or something like it's that. Not, no. It's not too bad on this car. The chaser though yeah. is like super expensive. Like the two V parts are like it's crazy expensive. Like I think I spent like four hundred dollars for like the light switch, the carbon fiber yeah, light switch. Yeah, it's like things like Maybe that. Maybe more than that. Yeah, which but is it, pretty wild. Yeah, because there's so little of them. Yeah. So Whereas how many cars do you have? This car only, or I have this car. I still have the Subaru STI, which we talked about. I have the JZX100 Toyota Chaser. Um, I have a 180SX, which is a drift car. I bought off a homie. Um, so I just finished that this season, kind of preparing it, upgrading the axles and stuff. Do you drift at all or? Uh, on a Seto Corsa, dude. I'm nasty on a Seto Corsa. <laughs> <laughs> so I just need to get out on the track and um, maybe a big parking lot for starters. I actually heard that it does help with um, like on, if you're wheel control, you actually, yeah, wheel control, control and distance, yeah, um, yeah, to to you know chase car or lead car, right, um, right. So I have a friend uh, Calvin. He was actually on the podcast too. He's big on sim, um, and I watch him sometimes when I, on Discord. Yeah, um, but he's like big on that. He said it definitely it's helps fun. and improves your 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 skills for sure. Uh, I want to start with that too. I don't want to just get into a drift build, right? Um, I'd probably be super overwhelmed. Yeah, and you have to have seat time. Yep. So you have to have your car out, burning tires all the time expensive it's expensive so yeah. that's probably the best way to get seat time is yeah it's definitely a set of course yeah yeah winter crept up on me like two years ago and i bought a race sim with a rig and everything how much you spend on it dude oh man it was like seven g's bro seven seven like i did all i went crazy with it like i went fanatic so it's got like direct drive like you got to click accept a warning like to like injury oh, really? warning when you turn it on and it's nasty but um yeah, I think it was worth it. You know, is that or buy like a 350Z or something yeah. and just start getting after it. But free seat time is how I look at it. 100%. Yeah. That's the best way. Have you seen Gran Turismo yet? Yeah, yeah. It looks dope. Finally, somebody who's seen Gran Turismo. Yeah. Every, every time I ask somebody, like, oh, I've never seen it. Like, how do you not, how are you a car guy right. if you haven't seen Gran Turismo? I mean, how am I a car guy and I came out here with no tools? <laughs> 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 That's crazy. How, what do you think about the movie? Was it fire or no? Yeah, I think it was fire. On a scale of one to 10, I'll give it like an eight eight yeah what's it missing maybe like just a little more like oomph you know just like a little more like in the storyline or the cars i would say the storyline yeah. yeah i feel like the the i mean i'm not gonna have a whole conversation on Gran Turismo, but uh, i just feel like the the relationship between the main guy and the father was kind of like corny to me yeah the acting was seem, a little poor <laughs> yeah it, it didn't seem like I've, that's probably what's missing yeah because i feel like it would have definitely hit more at the end for sure um but it's based on a true story yeah so Sick. that in itself i feel like they probably were like ah it's really happened so right you know um so what's next for you man like what do you uh what are you planning to build next are you still going to work on this so you have more more uh this is kind of in my done category i did a couple of things um here in the last like month or so just like switch the wheels out or whatever and like did some stuff in the engine bay and uh Next, I really have my eyes on like a Porsche. Porsche, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I'm not really too familiar with the chassis. Um, I just know what I want a GT2 RS. That's right, it. of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, but that's a couple hundred thousand. Right? Yeah, I'd say like four hundred thousand. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. Not bad. Yeah. Is that what you're going for? Uh, I think I'd go for like the NA GT3 RS if NA I could pick GT3 right now. GT3 RS. That's a nice car. The Turbo S is fire too. Turbo S is fire. I just feel like it's kind of. Do you feel like it's like played out? It's heavier, like weight wise. It's probably more so of a straight line car. Yeah. Whereas the GT3 RS is like track ready. Right. Nah, Porsches, Porsches are dope. I just, um, you know, I'm still in a Supra, so I'm not. Yeah. 
I almost think. bought a Supra. Um, Mark IV? The A90. A90. Yeah. Um, I bought a Audi RS3 recently yeah. as a daily. And I was on the fence between that and an A90 Supra. And I ended up sourcing one. The RS3s are pretty hard to get. So I like allocated one out of the blue and um, grabbed that instead. Yeah. But like it was like it was like the A90 or the RS3. But yeah, the Audi's love. It's like four doors and that's it's crazy. A so five no cylinder, which is kind of weird, but like yeah, no, those cars sick. are yeah definitely top top tier engineering. But I think between both cars, the Supra and the Audi, definitely B fifty eight is definitely top tier. Yeah, right now, for I sure. agree. But you definitely should have went with the Supra. <laughs> <laughs> Bias opinion. Next time, next time, next <laughs> for time. For sure. So um, aside from that, this event is like heavily like influenced by like people driving low. Yeah. Right. I'm more into like performance yeah. and a lot of people in New York are because New York roads are terrible. Yeah. So what I understand is like, why, why do y'all like be driving so low and scraping on the floor? Like, what is that? There was, there was <laughs> like a Honda Accord that came in last night. Remember that? Oh, it's TS. Oh damn. My girl knows her shit. <laughs> TSX that came in. I don't know if you, I don't know if you saw it. Um, is it the wagon? It wasn't a wagon. Was it? Nah, it wasn't. Okay. okay. Bro was scraping though. Yeah. Like the whole low, way through the gas station. So it's like, crazy. is that like a vibe? Like, it's just like yeah. a, yeah, I would say it's a vibe. He's probably feeling good when he's scraping. <laughs> it's style. <laughs> he was worried. <laughs> so, like, what's what's what what is that? Just give me some like context behind that. I would just say like the one word. I I probably said it twice already, but I would say it's just like style. You know, like like just being low. It's just like a different vibe. But you know, it's not scary to drive like your so, wheels are out like right this car's not here. that low so it's not really that hard. scary um the chaser's pretty low the chaser's lower than this car which like i've definitely like like chunked the fiberglass on that yeah. one um thankfully i haven't shattered a bumper or anything but um it's kind of funny you know when it happens like it, it sounds silly or whatever you're just like yeah i just bottomed my whole kit out you right. know it's, right it's it's just cool it's a different vibe or whatever i feel like um you're the person to ask for that because you know you are kind of a pioneer in this so um I, people always ask um when you see a car with the wheel sitting out it's mm. like why the fuck is he driving like that like, like how camber? do you drive like that yeah i mean it's it's sketchy you know like i've had uh like the most i've had was like negative seven camber um and it is like you feel it you know like like if you're like getting a weird spot or hydroplane like yeah. you know you're like don't have much tire compact or uh oh. tire patch so i would say it is like probably not the safest thing but like i try to keep my cars fairly functional and how do you how do you do with like tire wear like how does that work because you're only on the inside right a lot of guys will flip their tires so they'll like flip them if that makes uh, sense or like flip them to the other side I don't, i've never flipped tires i'm not exactly sure which way yeah. they flip it but like they'll get like double the life of the tire gotcha by doing that yeah i'm learning a lot because i have to i'm literally building my wheels yeah um and i have to seal them tonight yeah and i have to wait 24 hours yeah um i might wait 12 just yeah. because i do want to go to tomorrow but um it's definitely a process for sure it's definitely a process and i definitely learned a lot doing this yeah it's, it's fun stressful. it's kind of fun isn't it it is fun but it's like damn i'm missing out on so much my first time here yeah you know course. but i'm also stupid because i drove out here i didn't trailer my car uh -huh. so it's like you know i wish i would have yeah did that but did your tires uh db i did i yeah one of them did yeah the main one that hit and then uh, I also lost uh, a tire. So I had to spend $400 on a tire. Oh, tire yeah. And then I spent $1,200 to get the lips out here Dang. overnight. Overnight. And that FedEx is terrible. So yeah, yeah, it's definitely uh, a process. It's, it's part of the experience. Yeah, for you know? sure. I just didn't expect that. Right. Of course. Across the country. There's like an ongoing saying of the Gatlinburg curse. Yeah, that's what I, I think that's what Panda was saying earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah, everybody who's in this house at least has had some type of issue with a right. trailer, their car, or something yeah we had one homie that didn't make it but um pretty car much issues? yeah yeah he uh hit a bunch of rain he was driving his car he hit a bunch of rain and water got into his ecu and fried his ecu what car is a laurel yeah he's from indiana he's an indiana what? homie yeah was he stuck on the like yeah he was stuck on the side of the road had to wait like five hours for a flatbed that would take him all the way back home it, what does that cost i don't know i didn't ask that's a really good question <laughs> That's what I was Unless trying to figure out. Unless they did like out. state to state, maybe like pull it off one truck and put it on another. I'm not sure. Dude, from Jersey to New York, it's not even that far, but I'm pretty sure I would have spent like probably like a stack easy. Oh, at just least, getting bro. my car back to Long Island. You said how long's the drive? Uh, to here? Yeah. Uh, 
what was it, like 12 hours? I think 12 hours. Had to be a stack. Yeah. It's expensive, dude. Right. It's expensive. So you have the pre-meet tomorrow. Yep. Um, can you talk about that? Yeah. So uh, this is our seventh year of doing the pre-meet. Kind of funny story how we like obtained this. Um, obviously fell in love with Gatlinburg the first year we came. Yeah. Uh, we were at Slammed Enough Nashville, which is another event that these guys do. And uh, we went to like kind of like an after party, if you may. We were, we were with all the Slammed Enough homies and we were playing Flippy Cup. It was like Vaded versus Slammed Enough or whatever. <laughs> and uh, like right before the game, I was like, all right. I was like, let's let's make a bet yeah. <laughs> with Charlin and uh, Francis at the time, both owned it Slammed Enough, I think. Maybe, maybe I said that wrong. I don't know if Francis was an owner or not. So don't quote me there. But um, <laughs> we made a bet basically where if Veda beat Slammed enough that we would uh, be able to host a pre-meet for Gatlinburg year oh, two. Oh, okay. So okay. we beat him. It was sick. It was so sick. We beat him in Flippy Cup. And then uh, that's how we kind of hit the ground running with the pre-meet. So this is our seventh year doing it this year. You're blessed, man. You got like these stories and it's just like yeah. everything's just happening for you. Yeah. It's really cool how that's everything dope. comes together sometimes. That, do you feel like do you feel yeah like? i i very i think about it i try to reflect like even on the drive down here it's like 10 hour drive for me i try to take a moment and just like no music nothing and just like reflect on yeah how far like faded has come this event and the car culture myself my life you know right i think we all go through ups and downs so it's good to kind of like sit there and mentally connect with yourself and like reflect on like yeah because we all have things to be grateful for we just gotta like keep it pushing right and count those blessings that's dope, man. I mean, you know, you, people, you don't get to talk about that often when you see people on social media. You're right. You talk about it on your YouTube platform, but if, you know, yeah, if it's tough to do and you're right. You're not, it's not on Instagram or you're posting this kind of stuff. People Facts. don't really know. Facts. Yeah. You know? That's why I appreciated like coming on here and like, it, it's just, it was humbling with Steven telling me, you know, that you guys wanted to hear my story and everything. So it, it's, it's really dope because it gives me a chance to kind of like, yeah, like kind of like tell my story you know and like share it with you guys and you guys tell me your story and like how we're all here yeah so. it's my first year and obviously i came from new york a lot of people come from all over the country and just the fact that you're able to do that is fucking is crazy bro because we all have it. the same passion for cars right but i respect anybody i mean i respect anybody who, who loves cars but anybody that can do what you're doing or even what I'm doing with the podcast, be able to highlight people like yourself and be able to kind of put on for the community. That's yeah. huge. Yeah, That's it's huge. sick. It's so sick. I'm definitely I'm definitely grateful that you're here, and I'm I'm actually happy that I'm actually able to sit here and talk with you because my first year here. Feelings normally, mutual. Yeah. So like normally, like you know, it's it's somebody who's been in the scene for a while. Yeah. Um, but like it's my first year here. I don't really know anybody like that besides the people I'm with. So just the fact that I'm able to interview the, the pioneer of it all, it's like, it's, it's dope. It means a lot, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's fire, man. Yeah. It's really cool. appreciate it. It's really cool to see how far the event has came in general. We like owe a lot of it to the Slim Enough homies. Um, they, they allowed us to keep doing our thing. Yeah. Like behind the scenes with the pre-meet being the day before and everything right. and just let us handle it. Um, it's, it's certainly a lot, you know, even this year, like the cost went up, policing costs went up. Everything's up. Pulling now. permits, you know, like. It, it does take a lot to pull all together. Well, how many cars go to this pre-meet? Uh, so we allocated 1,300 parking spots. 1,300 parking spots. Okay. See? I was right. So now this is the thing. Most car shows, I don't want to talk shit about anybody. Most car shows would be like, oh, there was 3,000 cars there, 4,000 cars there. Look, that's a lot of cars, right? You're yeah. saying it's 1,300 though. Yeah. I'm not saying you're say you said anything different. But from New York, a lot of people always hype up the numbers and it's really only like 200 cars and everybody right. like, oh, it was a thousand cars showed up so i'm really curious to see what 1300 cars looks like yeah you know in a parking lot right so i course. have an actual accurate representation of like yeah. okay this is what 1300 looks like because i don't even know what a thousand looks like right to be honest it'll be full it'll be full we sold it out in like 30 hours i saw i saw that yeah. and i saw the video that um i think hamlet was showing me that the, the parking lot was crazy it's a big parking lot yeah so it's hard for us to do that in new york because people do stupid shit. right so we don't get to have the bigger parking lots because people fuck it up yeah time. fuck it up yeah so i'm really curious uh to see what that's gonna look like we've really lucked out over the years ever we've tried to like preach as much as possible like do not like do dumb shit yeah you know like because we want to come up. back next year you know we want to like bring everyone back together and i would say like almost every year it's been went really smooth i think last year there was one guy in a bmw doing uh <laughs> it's always donuts i think actually it's steven's friend <laughs> where's steven at uh i think it was steven's friend or whatever and like he was doing donuts in the parking lot before like all the cars rolled in and i was just like bro come on like the cops were on my ass about it so it's just kind of a pressing issue but um 
it's it's all love really you yeah. know it like it worked out just fine it happens you know you're gonna have like you're gonna have stuff happen so you just gotta keep it pushing no it comes with the environment yeah i, yeah. I, I completely get it it's just funny because have you been to new york uh, i have yeah any car shows there yeah i went to stance wars new jersey okay okay so just yeah, stadium so, i forget which stadium it was but uh it was probably in um i forgot what i forgot what, what uh it's convention center it was outdoor oh it was outdoor yeah i probably wouldn't know that it was cool though like i set up the veda tent i drove like i want to say it was like 13 hours or something yeah, like same. that but set yeah. up the veda tent same and uh sold some merch um it was fun dude it was fun getting out there and you're still you're obviously still selling merch and, and so on yeah we have an online online web store it's closed right now for like touring like just vending at sh actual shows and then like oh. we'll pop it back up here as uh winter approaches i'm gonna put it in the description below yeah um but if it's only open for like you know in person then yeah i try to do like kind of like capsule releases or like drops yeah, and create yeah. a demand but we'll have stuff all weekend so come through the booth i got you so the lowdown actually i don't know if you they, they have uh, yeah. a capsule that they did was yeah, yeah. i don't know if you saw it i didn't it's, but i know check it out yeah uh, it's fire like I, they have the s2000 rx7 in there and they had like a little uh, it was like a uh a convention center or something like that okay I don't know what it was it was definitely dope though but when you say capsule that's the first thing i thought about yeah so um so was that an event or i don't know i think it was, was an event like but like that's merch release too that's like something that i would love to do like you know a capsule kind of kind of yeah vibe. you should street off is a dope name too I'm learning, bro. But we can talk more offline about yeah, you know, how course. to how to grow and scale. Of but course. I'm new to this, so I'm trying to. We'll teach you know. each other something, I'm sure. Yeah, no, 100, 100. percent So uh, we're running we're running low on time because it's 4:30. I definitely want you to get your to your shoot. Yeah, appreciate um, it. But yeah, man, I feel like I learned a lot, and it was an hour. Wow, money. Is there anything you want to talk about? Man, that, I think I think we hit the nail on yeah, the head. Yeah, bro, like that's that was crazy. Fun. Yeah, because normally like two hours, but I'm trying to like pull things out of people, you know? It's, yeah. it's hard, but you like... Yeah. Solid. Tell the viewers where to find you. Tell the viewers um, where to copy your merch when it sure. is available. Sure, yeah. Uh, Vaded Mob on IG. It's V-A-D-E-D-M-O-B. My personal IG is Theraflu, like the cough medicine. Where did that come from? I, that was the first question. So, <laughs> it's so funny. People will like run up to me and be like, Theraflu? Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, there's a Kanye West song out when IG became like a thing. And I was like trying to create my account and I was listening to this Kanye West song called Theraflu. And I was like, fuck it. I'm going to like try Theraflu <laughs> or whatever and created it. And like, that's just what it was. I thought it was like a gamer tag. Yeah. That's just an IG handle. I've yeah. had like rappers try to buy it and shit really yeah like one oh, guy because you have the actual yeah there's no underscores nothing it's t-h-e-r-a-f-l-u like there's no no underscores no numbers or anything yo that's crazy so i had like a rapper try to buy it for like 5k and i nah. was like i was like give me 10 bro yeah. <laughs> like 10 was my number and then um he declined or whatever i was like all right that's crazy yeah so. wow you actually have the name yeah so that's dope those are my two socials my youtube is joshua freeman it's on there. Um, my website's vedamob.com. It's pretty straightforward in that Fire. aspect. Fire. Well, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate Thank you, you so dude. much. Thank you guys both yeah. for coming down. He's got his uh, yeah, for sure. video, is he video yeah. videographer. Yeah, this is Bailey. He's my videographer. Yeah. He, d he does my editing for YouTube and like helps me create content when it gets busy, you know? it's I did that for years. Yeah, yeah it's so fun. I definitely. Much love to you, brother. Yeah. It takes a lot, though. It's as we a all lot know. of work. Yeah. A lot of work. But you can't do it without him. Facts. You know what I mean? Real talk. So um, I hope to see you tomorrow, of course. Yeah. Um, and hopefully I can get my car there because, you know, the whole wheel situation. Yeah. If not, I'll still, I'll still be there. Yeah, slide through either way. way. And I'll, I'll stop by the booth and uh, check out your merch. And Perfect. Stuff. So um, until next time, guys, make sure you guys like, share, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> and also keep listening on all streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple, Amazon Music, Pandora. What else is there? We don't know. <laughs> everywhere everywhere and um yeah we'll catch you on the next one guys peace peace